Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Dan Fancy Creations, and today I'm going to be doing an updated version of my Geode Technique Tumblr. I love this Tumblr. I get so many requests for it. It's probably my most requested style from customers. And I have a tutorial uploaded to YouTube, which was originally in my Facebook group that is probably three years old, if not a little bit longer than that. So I figured it was time for a refresh to show you guys what I've learned over the years of doing this technique, some things that I have changed because I have definitely changed some things that I used to do and just kind of, you know, freshen everything up. Um, this Tumblr technique was originally created when I had a customer request a painting that I did onto a Tumblr. So before I even did Tumblrs or anything else to do with epoxy, I did um, epoxy art and one of the most items that I sold was my geode paintings. So I did a geode painting that was purple and gorgeous and poured in different layers with different shades of purple and mixed media like stones, crystals, mica flakes, chunky glitter, all kinds of crazy stuff like that. And I love that painting so much. It was my biggest seller, but I had a customer that wanted that epoxy painting onto a tumbler. So I got to work trying to figure out what would be the best way to transfer that design onto a cup and I settled with basically what I do now. Um, it's just as pretty as the painting. I love how it turned out and I'm so glad that all of you guys love this technique as well. And I hope that this updated tutorial can kind of help troubleshoot things that some of you guys may have problems with that maybe I wasn't able to address in the original tutorial or maybe help you do things a little bit easier this time around. So if you guys are ready to see the updated version of the damn fancy geode, let's get started. So the very first thing you'll need to do is prep your tumbler. I always base coat mine white and I always lay out my glitters in the pattern that I'm going to place them on my cup. I will take a pencil and draw the outline of my geode rings and this is really just a rough outline it doesn't need to be perfect sometimes i don't even follow this outline when i apply the glitter it just gives me a good reference on where my different colors are going to go and i always do one on one side and then one on the opposite side at either the top or the bottom and I will take Mod Podge and a couple different sized brushes. And I am basically just going to dab the Mod Podge onto the tumbler and sprinkle the glitter onto the tumbler. If you are using chunky glitter, it's always good to pat it down while the Mod Podge is still wet that way the glitter will lay flat on the tumbler and will make it easier to seal an epoxy when we get to that step. And you guys can see that I do not seal between my colors but I do try to pour it on the side um, and not let it get onto the color that I just applied. I don't know if that really makes too much sense, but I will apply my Mod Podge and instead of just pouring the glitter color over all of the colors, you guys can see I'm just tapping it along the Mod Podge and then tapping it off of my tumbler. So I try really hard not to get different colors mixed into each other. Sometimes it's avoidable if you have really dark colors next to really light colors, which I try not to do. 
but even if they do mix a little bit, it doesn't ever look bad. With these darker colors, you can see that a little bit better how I kind of pour it just on the Mod Podge and not onto the other glitter. And while you're doing this, don't forget to get your bottoms as well. You don't want the entire cup to be really pretty and sparkly and then the bottom just kind of boring. And I do kind of brush off my glitter with a big fluffy brush if any is kind of stuck on there only because I want to be painting my Mod Podge directly onto the tumbler and not have random glitter in the way of that. So we're just sprinkling this glitter onto the Mod Podge and then banging off our cup to get all the excess off. And if you guys can see, I know that this is sped up quite a bit, but instead of swiping the Mod Podge on, I am really kind of dabbing it on. And I do it that way because it causes the edges of the Mod Podge to be kind of irregular. You guys can see that they're kind of wavy and not straight. Um, and I do it that way on purpose because that typically follows the true pattern of a geode because you don't want it to be so perfect and straight or perfectly curved lines because that's not how real geodes actually look. And that is one thing I did when I first started doing these geodes. This purple one was actually the first color combo that I did. And then I got requests for several different colors. And I know that sometimes we can have difficulty picturing different colors in our head or what they will look like next to each other. So I would actually look up real geodes or real, you know, amethyst or rose quartz, different gemstones, just so I can see what they look like in nature and in real life so that I could get my geodes um, looking a little bit more realistic. And sometimes you'll come up with different colors like my rose gold geode. You know, there's not really a geode out there that's dark pink and gold or those kind of colors, but they still look really good next to each other. So you guys can transfer what you already know about colors and glitter and kind of transfer that over to your geodes. And with some of these colors, this particular purple that I was using is just a basic craft glitter. And I did have to go back and do a second layer in some spots. Um, this is definitely how you can tell the difference between regular craft glitter and high quality polyester glitter because most of the time the polyester glitter is going to give you really good coverage with the first layer and you will not need to go back and touch up spots. I just did not have a really dark purple in the polyester glitter that I have. So I had to use my Hobby Lobby brand or Michael's. So again, just brushing off all these little glitter spots that are stuck on there. And we just have a couple more layers left on this one. I typically do about six or seven different rings of glitter and I do typically use different colors for every ring. And I really only use Chunky for the middle part of the geode or the very smallest part because that typically, you know, trying to resemble where the crystals actually are 
in a real geode. And I think we have one final ring to go. This is definitely sped up for you guys. When I first uploaded this video, it was over an hour long. And I know that, you know, really long tutorials kind of, you know, seem to lose interest quickly. So it's basically just the same thing over and over again. Just painting different lines of Mod Podge and sprinkling glitter on. And the last layer is white. So I did have to be really careful when I applied the base coat or the outside rock color, which is a mixture of black and silver glitter because I didn't want all of that black and silver glitter to get onto my white ring. So this cup of glitter is going to be my rock color. I typically use like a brown rose gold mixture, but for my purple one, I do use this mixture of black and silver and a few other different colors. And I do use a little bit bigger brush for this one. And I just kind of do a few swipes of Mod Podge. I don't really thin it out too much because I do want to get good coverage with the Mod Podge so that I'm not having to go back and touch up spots with this glitter. I like to kind of get everything done in one step. <laughs> and you guys can see I'm just following that white glitter line because I don't want this glitter falling onto my white or purple rings. Some may get on there, but typically I'm able to brush it all off because it's not, you know, touching any wet Mod Podge. So once I have all of the colors on there, I will take a really fluffy brush and just kind of brush off any glitter that is really, really loose on there. And then I add a few little lines of chunky glitter in this same step. So I just kind of pick and choose where I want this chunky glitter to go. And I really just put it on there just to add different interest. I used to add mica flakes or little pieces of glass shards, but over the years I have decided not to do that just because it takes so many coats of epoxy just to cover that stuff and sometimes it can be a pain when you get everything finished and looking great and then you have to do another layer because something didn't get covered well enough. So chunky glitter is a little bit easier to cover and it still gives a similar effect. 
And that is basically it for this step. Once it dries overnight, at least because it has so much Mod Podge on it, I do spray seal it really well with Rust-Oleum two times. And then I will epoxy it two more times and then we will be ready for our next step. So once it has had two layers of epoxy and is cured, we are ready to clean up our rims and sand it really good. So since it's cold outside, I'm just going to use my sanding block and I literally just angle it on the tumbler and scrub the top. A lot of people worry about not giving, getting an even um, rim, but I have never messed this up. It's pretty easy to control how much you take off. Sometimes with the chunky glitter, you do have to sand a little bit harder than with fine glitter or just spray paint, but it does eventually come off, especially if you use a relatively new sanding block. I tend to use mine until the sandpaper starts coming off of the block. <laughs> so for the bottoms, we're just doing the same thing, just kind of sand it. I use medium pressure. I don't want to use too hard of a pressure and start taking off the glitter. Um, you can always take off more, but you can't put it back unless you want to Mod Podge and glitter again, which we don't want to do. And I just focus on the chunky spots that may need attention. So once everything is sanded and smooth, I wash everything with Dawn soap and then we will be ready to detail our geode with paint pens. And I will show you guys the stainless rim on the tumbler just so you can see what you can do with just a sanding block if you don't want to get your flap wheel out. And there you go. So now we're ready to detail and I use paint pens, glue stick, we're going to use silver leafing for this particular tumbler. For my paint pens, I like the Posca brand you can get on Amazon and I will link them in the comments. And you guys can see I am really just kind of following the outline of my glitter sections. I do all of them white and then I go back and add different colors to a few different rings. And I really don't, you know, I, there's no really rhyme or rhythm to this. I am not going slow and following the glitter pattern exactly. I really just kind of put my hand on the cup and kind of turn it as I move my pen. I don't really focus a whole lot on following the glitter pattern exactly. But I love adding these lines because I really feel like it brings the entire tumbler together. A lot of times when you make geode tumblers, you know, even just after glittering them, you may think, oh, I don't like how this is turning out. It doesn't look like all of these beautiful pictures that I've seen everybody else post. And that's just because they are not complete yet. And my geode paintings look the same way. That's, you know, you do them in layers and the different layers is what makes the end product turn out so good. So now that we are done with the white detailing lines, I will take my black paint pen and I will add a few lines of black. 
And I like using the black because I feel like it gives a little bit of definition to the tumbler. And just a little sharpness. So black and white are colors that I will use for every geode tumbler that I do. And then the third color, I typically use silver leafing pen, gold leafing pen, or the rose gold leafing pen. And I like using the leafing pens because they are very metallic and just give it an extra sheen. So you guys can see how much the black just changes the appearance that I really, really like. And then our final color will be the silver. And the silver is a little bit thicker, so you do kind of have to focus a little bit more on how you control it. But see how the silver just shines really bright? I just really like that effect on the tumbler, um, especially if it's in the sun and epoxy has been applied. It just gives the tumbler a really cool effect. And I will tell you guys that you do have to watch how you hold these. You guys can see I'm kind of holding them funny because you don't want to smear the paint that has been freshly applied. It does dry quickly, but I have definitely grabbed a tumbler and then had lines of black on my hand for the rest of the day. So once we finish with our silver lines it will be time to apply our silver leaf which is another layer kind of but it definitely just adds another element to the tumbler and makes the end result really pretty and I apply my leaf with a glue stick I you know, it's just the easiest way to do it, I guess. It dries really quickly, so you do have to work kind of fast with it. But I will basically just kind of apply it, the glue, onto, you know, a line or around a glitter section. And just press the silver or the gold leaf into the glue. And I will just do random dots um, just to get a couple different sections of silver. And then you can do larger sections as well. And that's another thing about these tumblers that no matter how many of these I do, even if I use the same colors none of them will be exactly the same and that's what I really like that your customer is truly going to have something that is one of a kind nobody is going to have the exact same tumbler as them And after we have all of our silver leaf applied, I typically wait a little while for it to dry. 
Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to try to brush everything off as best I can. <laughs> I typically use a stiffer paintbrush and that gets a lot of the leafing off of the tumbler. I also like using a thicker brush because I do like to distress the gold leaf or the silver leaf um, because I don't just want a huge chunk of silver on the tumbler. I do like to distress it a little bit. And if you brush everything off on a piece of paper, then you can always add this back to your bag. So you're not wasting any of it because we know that leafing can be pricey. After the leafing is applied, I will spray seal it with Rust-Oleum Clear Spray. You can add a decal if you want, and then you will epoxy one or two more times. That is basically it for this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see the geode color combinations that you guys come up with. If you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Also, don't forget to catch the next video coming up. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to find my tutorial group that is linked in the description. Thanks for watching.